Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, I'm going to give you guys a full ranked breakdown. The best on YouTube, giving you guys the best first picks, last picks, a example draft from competitive, also just good options as well. And I'm going to be breaking down literally everything with all the modifiers. There's so much to go into, so make sure if you're not already to subscribe. This video took me at least 16 hours to go through all the graphics, gameplay, and just, of course, playing loads of Masters games myself. So, yeah, I appreciate you guys if you subscribed. So, we're going to take a look at the modifiers just quickly, just because I'm not too sure what the meta is going to be. I've not had the chance to even play them yet. So, after a few days after a try of them, I'll do a video on that. So, again, you don't want to miss out on that. So, to begin with, the first modifier is Time Detonation. That's actually a modifier that was already in ranked last season. So, we know the meta already. If you're unaware, it's just sharpshooters galore. There is the odd chance that you can go like a counter like Meg or just something like that. But for the most part, it should be safe where you brought us like Piper, Bell, Nanny. Mandy, Jean, you know, those long range shot shooting star kind of meta brawlers. Next, we have uh, Sick Beats. So, Sick Beats, if you don't know what it is, basically all brawlers are immune to knockbacks, stuns, slows. So, my guess is that assassins should be better, tanks should be better. But then again, there's a lot of brawlers that have that kind of knockback feature built into them, which they're going to indirectly get worse. I'm interested to see how the meta develops with this, but my guess is that brawlers like Ego, Mortis, BB, Frank, Hank will get better. I'm not too sure whether they'll just dominate the meta. They could quite possibly, just like we've seen with Big Friend, dominate the meta. I'll have to try it out. And then lastly, we have Bobbed Ammo. So if you're unaware what this is, essentially every ammo would deal an extra 10% damage over time, which essentially, from what I believe the meta will be like, Surely the brawlers that are the heaviest hitters will get the most value out of this. So, for example, Piper, if she shoots, I don't know, in a bush, she can deal like 3,800 damage. Imagine an extra 10% damage on top of that. I think this isn't going to be the most toxic modifier out there. Again, it could be completely wrong, but I'm interested to see where this one lies. Uh, this is probably the most confusing out of all of them. So now we're going to be jumping into the classic modifier. These are going to be your best picks overall. We're going to be going through every single map and mode. So we're going to take a look at Bounty first, starting off with Excel. So you can see the best picks on your screen. You can see the example draft as well. It's probably best to pause it and get a good like, look at it and see uh, how the pros draft. But Excel is a little bit different to your convenient Bounty. You know, everyone just thinks straight away snipers, sharpshooters, etc. But... I would say for the most part, most of them will get countered out because any type of aggression, any skilled player can start to push them back when you just go to one set of walls. Look, there's just so many walls around and sharpshooters just really struggle to find any value because you could literally just sit behind that wall. And what can sharpshooters do? You literally require a pinch every single time if you're to get any true value. So that's why you see other bounty brawlers like Gene, uh, brawlers like Gray, for example, Cordelius, Miko, Mr. P. There's a lot of examples where you don't need a pinch to get damage. That's where you're going to really excel on this map. But I would say shop shooters are still like a good late pick. But as I said, it's not just your go to. Like people just pick Piper, Nanny, because those are their comfort picks. But overall, there's better options. So start to really learn the meta here. Also, one big advice is to try and stay away from. The meta at the lower ranks because you're not going to improve you know for example if you're just constantly picking egg or colt it's not going to work at the later ranks so this is masters level drafting make sure to try and learn as quickly as possible so now we're going to be moving into hideout these are going to be your best picks on the screen right here so quickly i'll also go through what first pick means what sixth picks means and i won't repeat it throughout the rest of the video so make sure to really learn this one so first pick essentially is when you win the coin toss so you get that little coin toss at the beginning and that's very important to take a look at because you don't want to give them some of the most powerful brawlers in their game so if your opponent wins the toy cost you want to make sure that you're banning the likes of angelo charlie larry and laurie pretty consistently you'll see these three brawlers pop up pretty much all of the time in terms of best first pick brawlers so if you're unsure who to ban one of those three brawlers is always safe and then last pick so again if you get first pick the opponent will have last pick so you need to focus on brawlers that are good at countering certain compositions so this is going to be brawlers like throwers assassins those are going to be your best late picks so you know you want to be making sure you're banning the likes of mortis miko it changes a lot but those are the typical bands that i really go for anyways this is the hideout meta event so 
Again, in comparison to other maps, I'll say sharpshooters are still good, but I was quite surprised that the pros didn't really draft sharpshooters too much on this map. But I would say you're pretty safe to go it on ranked. You know, I pretty much always go like Nanny, Piper, Mandy, all of these sharpshooters, and I tend to carry a lot of the time because you've got to realize as well, in ranked, you need to pick those carry picks. But again, your non-traditional brothers are actually going to be good here. You're probably surprised as well that pressure is really easy to get on this map. If you can get into that left-hand kind of L-shaped wall with like a Miko, a thrower, uh, just any kind of high HP brawler, you're going to be able to push the opponents all the way back into spawn. And then it's really easy just to gain kills. You'll also be surprised that Kit is a really strong pick on this map because the reason why Kit's so strong, once she gets one super, you can just stand in that little pocket area again, like a thrower, and just get a lot of damage. Throwers are just so good when they haven't got a counter to them. Also, as well, the good thing about Kit, typically you have a good sharpshoot on your team. So if there is someone that is isolated, you can just jump on them with Kit and you can get an easy kill. So those are going to be your best picks for Hideout. And lastly, for Bounty, we have Shooting Stars. So these are going to be your best picks on the screen. Again, I'm unsure whether the Shooting Star meta has really evolved whatsoever, except for with the introduction of Angelo. He's like the best brawler in the game. And of course, on a long range map, he's going to be your best option. I would say brawlers like Jean and Bell are starting to become a lot stronger in shooting star. You know, typically they were good. I don't know, like four or five picks, but I would say they're starting to become some of the literal best picks on shooting star. In terms of the meta overall, then again, I'm taking a look at all the other picks and these are just the same generic brawlers. I'd say Leon has started to become a bit weaker. I think he can just pick him as a carry pick in ranked, but because of that nerf to his uh, minimum damage at maximum range, it means on longer range maps, it takes a lot longer to get your super. So just bear that in mind right now with Leon. He's actually a little bit better on the shorter range maps now. So yeah, take that as you will, but he should still be good in ranked. Pearl is an underrated pick, even with the recent nerf. I think people aren't drafting her enough. She's still pretty solid overall. Meg is a great counter to all of those snipers. You've also got the throwers that can still be good in the middle. Again, you can't just be picking them really early in the draft, I believe, because a lot of the times good players can just be really aggressive. But there are those throws that you can pick from. You know, Tick's still good. Larry and Laurie, Sprout, Grom. It's still got your handful of brawlers. The unbreakable wall is going to allow you to still get a lot of pressure. So that's going to be shooting stuff. Now we're going to be moving on to Brubble side off with center stage so these are going to be your best picks on the screen right here so center stage by far is the best map for tanks i believe in the ranked rotation it's just so much grass there's so much potential to catch the opponents off guard and so much uh, kind of team play going on so the best picks you'd be surprised isn't angelo and larry and laurie rico and sandy are so good on this map if you can get sandy it's insane so the reason why sandy's so good the super with the rude sands star power literally can cover the entire grass and push the opponents back and then literally they'll have to retreat back to the back walls and you just get free map control and you'll be able to score easily rico's insane here because if you pop the vision gear on him and the reload gear as well you're just spamming out shots relentlessly and a good rico will absolutely carry on this map so you need to make sure that you're getting that brawler if it's in uh if it if you're able to actually get it also tanks as i said I don't even think tanks are good last pick. You just pick tanks whenever. As long as like Charlie's banned and maybe like an M's or something like that. Then you can just run them everywhere. You know, Rosa is absolutely insane. Buster is a really good synergize uh, pick. So I like to go Buster typically with brothers like Jesse or just with another tank counter out there like Surge or an M's, Otis. Just because if you group up at the beginning, literally one Buster Super will cover the entirety of the lane and you can literally just force your way up the map and gain map control. It's so easy to just dominate with Buster on this map. So a lot of good picks here. Again, making sure you've at least got one brawler that can scout a lane so you know at least you're not going to get uh, ran all over from that certain lane. So moving on to the next brawler map, we have Goalkeeper's Dream. Here are the best picks on your screen right here. So I could only find a couple of competitive games on this map. I believe they didn't really play it too much over the weekend because it's just a terrible map. But these are your best picks from what I've been playing so far. So again, your typical sharpshooter is going to be good here. You've got to be careful though. You can't draft too many sharpshooters in a row because there is a lot of countering going on on this map. You might not believe it. You might just think, gosh, you know, it's long range map, just sharpshooters only. But trust me, Poco going into this, I, I believe I didn't even put it on the graphic. I'm an idiot for doing that. But Poco 
going into a couple of sharpshooters will literally just run all over them, especially since his recent buffs. Anyways, best picks, Angelo, Charlie, always going to be insane. And then Piper's going to be good because at least Piper, you can switch to the other gadget if there's a couple of assassin brawlers. And then you've got Colette who can just wreck through a lot of the meta brawlers on this map, like Bonnie, Meg, for example. And then Leon's just really solid because you can just put a gadget down the lane. And even though it's a longer range map, I feel like there's a lot more mid-range engagements here. So he's able to build up his super a lot easier. You've also got brawlers like Bonnie who are starting to become a lot more meta now. The reason why Bonnie's so good is because she's just got so much HP. You can just run at them with your HP and the gadget. And there's not much you can really do. So goalkeeper's dream. You've got to be careful in terms of ball positioning because it's really easy to score. But I think there are a lot of options you can go here. Moving on to the final Brubble map, we have Pinball Dreams. You can see the best picks on your screen right here. So be surprised by some of these really good first picks. You won't be surprised by the first three. But the other three, again, aren't your like convenient, insane picks. So Gray, for example, is really good. Main reason being is because he can kind of win the poke battle in the middle. You know, he's not the best, but he's okay. But the good thing about him is that you can open up the lane pretty easily And he also pairs with tanks really well as well So for example, if there's a really annoying thrower You can walk in cane and break open one of the lanes Even if there's a tank as well, you can break open the lane And like I said, he pairs really well with tanks himself So you see that strategy a lot Where someone will go a grey and then they'll go like a Jackie, Rosa, Buster, etc, etc uh, Nita's also a really strong pick on this map Again, main reason being is because once you get the Bruce Bear You can just push your opponents all the way back into spawn so easily she's a good tank counter as well and you can just sit Nita behind that left pocket right there and the only way that you can counter really is by a thrower or a wall break which are pretty easy to counter on this map in terms of your other picks you've got to be worried about as well this is a very last pick heavy map so always be aware of those throwers always be aware of those tanks as well you've got to at least make sure you've got one tank counter in there just because Again, like there's, there's so it's so easy to push your opponents back if you've just got a really kind of weak composition. Then an Ash, a Primo, a Jackie can just run at you and just get full map control. So make sure you've got at least one of them in there. A wall breaker would be good as well. And you should be pretty good to go. Okay, so now we're going to be moving on to Gem Grab, starting off with Double Swoosh. Here are your best picks on the screen right here. So say Double Swoosh is a little bit of a weird one, just because a lot of team synergy can be required on this map. There are some basic picks that you can go, which will be pretty bulletproof. And a surprising one, again, could be the likes of Sandy. Sandy's just so good because the thing about Sandy, you can put Sandy on lane. It can even play Sandy mid. And again, it's that super where you can scout the entire bush with Rude Sands, which gets you map control, and that wins you the game ultimately and a lot of brothers would just feed sandy easily on this map you've also got the likes of amber down the right hand side once you get one super you can just burn the entire lane and then it's pretty easy to just gain map control from there also you can burn the mid grass as well so the enemy gem carrier can't sneak around that mid section making it easier for your gem carrier you've got the likes of jesse as well jesse's really good because again you can sneak around the grass and um, jesse's actually secretly quite a good shotgun brawler she does a lot of damage so you can be pretty sneaky your turret can get a lot of value also, in terms of other surprising picks, you've got the likes of Janet, who's actually a really good late pick, especially with her gadget that can scout the grass and just overall. Only good late pick, though, because she, of course, isn't good against any type of tanks. Good synergy picks as well to really be uh, careful of at the later ranks of the likes of, like, Grey and Mid. And again, paired with a tank. We've seen this a lot in the World Finals. It's not really used too much more in competitive, but I say definitely be wary of it. Again, brothers like Nita might be surprising, but down the left-hand lane, they're just such a good pick. Really safe. Got a lot of HP, so you can always make sure you're using that HP to push your opponents back. Other good picks in terms of the mid, you've got Gene, you've got Bo, uh, you've got some other ones as well, like Jesse, like I've already mentioned, Sandy. There's a lot of brothers that you can kind of be interchangeable with lanes and mids. Stu as well, a good option there. But it's double swoosh, you should be pretty familiar with the meta here. So next up, we have Minecraft Madness. So this one's a little bit of a hard one to draft on, mainly because you can't anticipate whether you'll get the first minecart or not. The reason why that's very important is because the first minecart will predetermine whether you're going to get the first amount of pressure. So literally from that first minecart, you can start spawn trapping the opponents and just get such a big lead. So anyways, the first uh, best picks are definitely going to be 
the Charlie, Angelo and Larry and Laurie. Do I need to explain any more? In terms of other good picks as well, you might be surprised, but Max is a very good pick on this map, mainly because her super just allows you to gain control so quickly. She recently received a buff. She's a skilled mid brawler. Again, don't go Max if you're kind of in that mid range, but if you're looking to push in towards Masters, then learning Max is really good on this map. Bell's good because you can play Bell as a mid or a lane. Uh, actually depending on whether your opponents pick like a counter pick like Piper or Nanny but she's just insane on Eva. Leon's good here because again there's a lot of mid engagements and as long as you're not facing off against some counters like Stu and Charlie you're always going to do a lot of work on gem grab. In terms of other, other surprising picks as well Miko is insane on this map and it's not even as a last pick you can pretty much pick Miko anywhere and you'll just get insane value of course it's literally made from you can jump over the minecarts He's just going to easily find damage. And then once you get your first super, you can just keep going on the gem carrier over and over again. So that's going to be minecart badness. Lastly, for gem grab, we have Rustic Arcade. So pretty new map in the rotation. And this map literally is sharpshooters only. So you've got to be a little bit careful of late pick. I'd say it's not really that overwhelming on this map because it's literally so open. If you've got good aim, you're still going to be able to counter those sharpshooter counters. But still be wary of brawlers like Mortis, Fang, uh, also sprout as well can be pretty good down the lane but it should be pretty safe to go so in terms of surprising picks here a lot of them you should be uh wary about already likes of bell likes of piper nanny etc etc but some surprising picks ruffs is going to be a good surprising pick because again i see no one draft him when i play ranked but every single time i get my hands on him he's so easy to play mainly because you know that lane still is pretty tight so it's easy to hit shots with roofs and he's just it's just hard to lane a good roofs can easily win any matchup on this map again other surprising picks as well meg is really good because if you take a look at either lane down the side you can literally just shoot your meg attack and deal damage no matter what so it doesn't even matter if your mid isn't pinching the lane which you do need a lot on this map Meg can just pinch by herself so that's one easy good thing as well same goes with like Rico which can be pretty easy Amber as well once you get your super you can easily get damage onto the opponent so yeah Rustic okay it's all about those snipers but still making sure that you don't go free of the same brawler because you can still get countered by those assassins we're going to be moving on to high starting off with bridge too far so you can see the best picks on your screen right here so in terms of the best first picks it's going to be eve angelo and nanny the reason why eve is so good she literally never gets banned as well in my rank games but she's so good because of course you've got so much water you can easily pinch lanes and she's just really hard to deal with it's so hard to kill eve on this map you've got angelo as well but he's pretty much banned all the time and then nanny reason why nanny is so good is because nanny counters every other lane on this game because of course nanny has like the longest range and then once you get your super you can just teleport onto the safe and deal a lot of damage so nanny's good for that reason chuck is really good on this map as well because if you just literally put your post down the middle you're always going to get guaranteed value and guaranteed control charlie's still good even though it's more longer range map you're still gonna have a good matchup against a lot of different rulers and you can still get consistent damage on the safe colt he's insane and heist you should know that already in terms of late picks again i wouldn't really worry too much about late picks i don't think they're that strong on this map there are a few good ones like edgar grom larry and laurie sprout can be surprisingly good especially with the hypercharge but Again, you know, typically as a late pick, I just pick another sharpshooter or something like that because there's not really too much room to counter on this map. It's all about hitting his shots. Also, a good strategy on this map, the reason why brawlers like Colette and Bell might not be the best is because they don't actually deal a lot of damage to the high safe without their supers or whatever else. So people always say Colette, Colette, Colette on bridge too far, but just a quick tip. Colette's actually not that strong. You can just easily ignore Colette don't feed her super keep running to the opposite lane where colette is and it's a good counter i think noobs won't be able to understand that though so you might need to ban her out on this map but on the higher levels that's a good strategy to counter so now we're going to be moving on to pit stop these are going to be your best brothers on the screen right here so right now this is the only kind of base race map in the rotation so you can see a lot of tanks are favored on this map so in terms of best first picks it's going to be edgar charlie and rico so you you've heard me right Edgar is like the best first pick on this map, mainly because you can just tap your gadget and by the time you've got to mid, you can just jump over the wall and deal insane amounts of damage. It's just constant pressure. You can just can't ignore it. 
it adds up over time and it got counters a lot of the good rulers on this map so just bat it out there's no point even wasting your time trying to counter it here also good picks as well cordelius and nita nita's just a solid pick because it's so easy to turn defense into offense especially with bruce and then cordelius as well he counters pretty much every single assassin or tank on this map so easy to defend with him also as well you can just get yourself onto the save much quicker with your super in terms of other good picks as well i wouldn't be afraid to just go in tanks galore literally even if the opponents pick like three tank counters out there the name of the game in heist is always damage so if the opponents are constantly defending you're eventually going to just overwhelm them and get a lot of damage you can't win the game just constantly defending so that's why i always say at least get two aggressive rulers on your team that can deal a lot of damage if left alone on the safe so you know bb primo buzz you see this a lot on this map even brawlers like colt jesse can secretly be pretty strong but i see bb primo used all of the time here because if you're just constantly running in it over and over again even if it's a shelly or a charlie you know they're just stuck defending they're never going to deal damage to your safe so that is a good tip for pit stop and lastly for heist we have safe zones so it's going to be your best picks on the screen right here so chuck is returning on this best pick she mainly because again even though there's ways to counter chuck it's still a brawler that you have to deal with every single time so if you're playing chuck make sure that you push down the left hand side try and get that first super on the back end of the safe and then after that it's easy to set up the post he's just so hard to deal with you've also got the likes of klet who's just insane in heist of course and then nanny re again the reason why nanny is so good on this map is because nanny will counter all the generic mids you know brothers like piper bell bonnie and then once you get your super nanny you can just constantly teleport on the safe and get insane amounts of damage in terms of other good picks as well that people forget about often eve again eve's always forgotten about on safe zone and bridge to fall but eve's like one of the best picks to make sure that you get in her a lockdown cordelius is a good sneaky pick again you know you ranked random probably won't play cordelius too much because i think he is pretty high skill cap because of his limited range but he's a good shutdown brawler to brawlers like chuck he's a good shutdown to a lot of late picks on this map He's just a good defender, so it's always pretty good to go Cordelius. And he can jump over the lakes as well. Bonnie is a brawler returning to the highest meta as well. So picking Bonnie is just guaranteed damage. It takes three hits to get your super. So you can just keep going on a safe over and over again. We're talking about that constant pressure. It's just vital in heist. Again, another underrated pick that people just kind of sleeping on in this meta is 8-bit. He still deals insane damage. You can still be like defending the whole game and you just need one 8-bit super to finish off the game. And in terms of late picks... I think there's a couple of options that are really dangerous you've got to think about. Carl and Grom in particular. So now we're going to be moving on to Hot Zone, starting off with Jewel and Beetles. So these are going to be your best picks on the screen right here. So Jewel and Beetles is always kind of famous for getting countered by those generic late picks like Sprout, uh, Squeak, any type of aggression. So making sure that your whole composition isn't going to get countered by the last pick so that's why i always suggest going like maybe like a wall breaker so even if you go like a stew or if you go like a griff gray you know anything that can break a wall or any type of aggression yourself so you'll see quite a lot of the time people will go like stew because it's that good in between you can uh, switch to breakthrough if the opponent runs like a sam or a rosa or you can just use speed zone which is insane i'm also seeing a lot of poker right now Again, he's underrated. People don't know the power of Poco just yet again, but in Holt Zone, he's insane, especially with his recent buff to his gadget. Jesse's insane here. Of course, with the unbreak unbreakable walls, put your hype charge turret behind that, and there's hardly anything stopping. In terms of uh, kind of synergies, you've got to be careful of. I'll say definitely have to be careful of Gray and the tank. We see that strategy used a lot in ladder. It's pretty hard to pull off a lot of the time if people are clever because you can just pick like Cordelius or like a really big tank counter out there. But sometimes people might forget it. And then if you can pick a gray and a tank five and six, and you're pretty much going to win every single time. Other good late picks as well. I see people don't really pick Pam too much, but Pam is pretty good. And also Lou as a late pick. Lou is overrated as an early pick, but you know, to counter big hp brawlers like pam luke can be pretty solid so now we're going to be moving on to ring of fire here are your best picks on the screen right here so in terms of ring of fire again there's some brawlers that people forget about every single time and there's always some overrated brawlers so the first overrated brawler is rico please don't go rico on this map even if you're the best rico ever basically just ignore rico it's so hard for a rico to get damage on the mid the, the way you play ring of fire is you send two people in the mid pretty much every single time 
and then depending on what kind of brawler you got your composition you want to send the other one just to try and rake havoc on the enemies so whether that's a leon whether that's just any brawler as soon as you get some kills just get in their grass pretty much straight away because any opponents are forced to try and pinch you out the grass so you don't know where you are they're wasting a lot of time whilst you're getting a lot of zone percentage so again what i always recommend as well go in one brawler with a big amount of hp because it's so hard to get a good amount of percentage with a brawler like piper bell you'd rather want someone with meg pam just anyone with a little bit more hp 8-bit even like colette bonnie you know there's a few other options that are in like the mid hp pool just don't go a sniper that's the one that's trying to get all percentage because you're eventually going to get overwhelmed so that's going to be ring of fire finally for hot zone we have split so this one plays out a lot different to the other hot zone maps i'd say that this one's the most cheesiest because you don't really need the most brain cells to play this one but there are your best picks on the screen right here so again you gotta be a little bit careful of those late picks you know brawlers like miko dynamite Edgar can be pretty solid as late picks sprout as well but just require a little bit more skill to play those brawlers so the way that split is played generically is that you send two brawlers down the right hand side and then one down the left you might want to send it two down the left depending on how good your ma matchup is down the right you know if you have a roughs against two brawlers that are just easy to defend against or a rico for example and you might want to send it two down the left hand side so again a good strategy as well is that you need at least one wall break in your composition main reason being is because it's so hard to get on the left lane so whether the wall break is like a gray with the walking cane gadget whether it's griff whether it's Stu with breakthrough whether it's roughs with his super you need something or you need a brawler that can like jump over walls like cordelius for example or you just need a tank to brute force their way into the zone so that's always always uh, a strategy that i suggest in split because again it's just so hard to push down the left and again in terms of what you want to focus on make sure you got the right every single time because that's going to be the hardest for the opponents to get so make sure you got right and locked down worry about the left in the future just always 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 keep someone on that right hand side in terms of other strategies as well I see throwers are underrated a lot on this map. You know, brawlers like Willow and Barley. I'd say Willow is a really underrated brawler. The reason why she's so good is because at least she can defend herself against aggro picks. So that's why I like to go Willow a lot here. Okay, so now I'm moving on to the final game mode. And we're going to be starting off on Bell's Rock in Knockout. So Bell's Rock has recently been changed. So it's, that, it's definitely changed the meta quite a fair bit, I would say. I, th I think throwers are starting to become a little bit more meta again. You know, before they were actually removed from the meta really for about a month. But now they're back in terms of your best picks and overall again you'd be surprised that snipers aren't actually as good as you think on the higher tier gameplay mainly because there's a lot of counters out there but you still be pretty safe with like pipe for example i won't really go nanny unless you're looking to counter other sharpshooters because there's good counter picks like meg for example so again you'd be surprised but like kit can be a really sneaky pick what I'm seeing right now a lot in pro games is people are going like Buster and pairing it with like a Gene or just pairing it with anything right now because once you get one super you can just push yourself up the map so easily and now that you can't get spawn trap really as easily on Bell's Rock that you're kind of a lot safer going uh, those tankier options in terms of other good picks as well but i'm starting to sneak back into the meta rico really solid in bell's rock right now he just gets so much value when you can push the opponents back like you know typically no one would ever go in that midsection towards the end of spawn but now people kind of hang around there and that's where rico can just get so much value you can push up with uh, the heal gadget just get a lot of value gene as well he's insane on knockout right now again other picks that you might be thinking oh that's a little bit weird but likes of cordelius can be really good because people like to go kit a lot at higher elo so it's going to be your best picks for bells rock so now moving on to new horizons it's going to be your best picks on the screen right here so again in terms of like how the pros draft is a lot different because when i play new horizon on ranked it's just long range brawlers people don't really understand the value of throwers on this map and they don't understand the value of busters so if you can get buster down with like a gene or a thrower it's pretty much gg because you can just camp behind walls and literally wait for the end game use your super to block all the shots and you win every single time i see that cheese strat used all of the time on new horizon so if you're starting to come up against that kind of composition then there's a few ways to counter it either you bring a throw over your own or you bring a wall breaker you definitely need a wall break on this map in my opinion so again if you want to just abuse the noobs you can go a thrower you can go buster like i said a lot of people again don't understand the power of sprout for example sprout is so good literally one wall 
will just block an entire lane. It's absolutely insane how good Sprout is on this map. Again, your kind of generic shop shooters aren't as strong as you really think. They're going to be good in the mid uh, kind of engagement. But I think the reason why you use sharp shooters like Piper and Nanny probably are just to break open the lanes. But sometimes people just opt for a Brock straight away because you can just use one gadget and break open the lane pretty much straight away. Again, brawlers like Grey are so good because you can use the walking cane to stop the cheesiness. cheesiness and also, Grey's a great counter to sharp shooters once it gets this super and good counters to throwers that just hide behind walls. So, a lot of good options for New Horizon, but there's a lot of cheesy strats. And lastly, we have Alternate Open. So, these are going to be your best picks on the screen right here. So, again, I think Out in the Open is just the same meta, really, as always. There's only a few brothers that are kind of made it back into the meta, like Bonnie and also Gene, for example. But it's just your same type of strategies. So, with Out in the Open, I always suggest trying to get one brother that has any type of wall break. It doesn't have to be a wall break strategy straight away you know for example you can wait to get wall break with nanny or piper or you can just use brock and open up the lane straight away or you can just use an eve that can just bypass that and go down the left hand side the reason why i stress this so much is because on out in the open it's so easy to get spawn traps so if you can break that middle section right there then there's kind of like three areas you can escape spawn if you don't, you're just going to get spawn traps so easily. So in, good, in terms of good late picks here, I don't think it's too valuable in terms of like late pick. You know, there's a lot of other maps where late pick is really, really important. But, you know, brothers like Miko can be good. Buster really good with some good team synergy. Mandy can counter those snipers, but I still think snipers are going to be really good. Meg is insanely underrated because with Meg, you can just run it down so easily, push the opponents back, spam your heal gadget. And you're just going to win the game that way. There's also brawlers like Bonnie as well. With Bonnie, with the amount of HP she has, it's pretty easy to push your opponents back to spawn. There's also some underrated picks like RT in a meta where if you're kind of scared of being pushed back to spawn pretty easily, then RT is your kind of safe bet right there. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. There's so much to dive into in terms of draft, and it's pretty hard to really teach you guys how to draft consistently. But at the same time, if you're picking a lot of these first pick brawlers and being wary of those late pick brawlers, you should be good to go with this draft. So that's going to be it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.